Hmm. Hey Eric, what you doing? Nothing much. I have this video idea, but I want to bring someone else in for the conversation. Why not that nation person? It's Notion, and... Eh. Meanwhile, on the Brony Notions channel... This is the Brony Notion, signing out until next. What in the... Come to my channel, P.S. Turtle? Um, I guess I'll explore what this door is. Okay, he should be here soon. Did you give him any specifics? Nope. Uh, hello? Hello, head towards the sound of my voice. Where am I? What's with this hallway of doors? It's the rift door thingy. I never got a clear explanation on that. I just got some cryptic message telling me to go to someone's channel, and it said turtle at the bottom for whatever reason. I didn't leave that last part, but anyways, I wanted to talk to someone else about the season 4 finale. In particular, how it was ingenious. Oh, so you're the one who sent that note. What do you mean the season 4 finale was ingenious? The magics. In the meantime, cue the intro! Hello interwebs, I'm Eric and welcome to the Looney Turtle. When Twilight's Kingdom came out, there were a lot of members of the community who said that the whole plan they had with the Alicorn magic was a bad idea and they got lucky with it in the end. Well, I thought it was a matter of destiny, like the main six were destined to get their rainbow powers and defeat Tirak. You know, it's got to be my destiny. But going back to the more realistic, here's an idea. The plan was freaking ingenious. Do you mean to say that the events of this two-parter were all planned, including the whole Discord betrayal gambit? Yes, for example, remember how Discord was the one that gave the main six the recently bookmarked Journal of Friendship? Yeah, what about it? Well, the dialogue can lead you to believe that Discord was the one who bookmarked those entries, but for me that doesn't add up. Throughout the season, each member of the main six received a key from someone who genuinely learned a lesson, and then Discord comes along supplying not only the answer for their struggles, but the final key. That's a good point. Why would Discord lead them to finding the keys if he himself didn't know where the sixth key was coming from? Well, maybe he was in the dark on what those entries actually meant. Perhaps he wasn't the mastermind behind Tyrek's defeat. Whoa, who says there was a mastermind behind Tyrek's defeat in the first place? That's quite an assumption to make. All the different factors that played into what went down would make it impossible for someone to plan that far ahead. Besides, why would this person use Discord rather than just give the main six the highlighted book directly? To sum it up in one word, destiny. Wait, but I thought you said- Well, it's not the traditional way that you think about it. I'm more intending that it's a prophecy, but destiny and its respective definition sounded more fitting. In this context, I mean the individual who planned all this out can see into the future, making it an event that will necessarily happen to a particular person or thing in the future. A destiny. So you're saying this person saw into the future and set things up so they would become a reality? Yes, and you and I both know that there's only one pony who can pull that off. Pinkie Pie. No. Um, Newt Pippington Britishoffs? No, and that's not even his canon name. Ooh, you just brought back some horrible memories. Okay then, what about that sea serpent? It's Celestia. Celestia is who I was talking about. Oh, that was gonna be my next guess. Sure it was. But getting back to the point, Celestia and presumably Luna have the potential to see into the future. For example, remember in this very episode when Celestia wakes up from having that vision about Tyrek's return? With this ability, what if they can also see into the future? Hmm. If Luna can walk in the dreams of other ponies, it wouldn't be surprising to find that Celestia could see future events. Plus, we have the premiere of Season 4, the potion that let Twilight see into the past. Maybe there's also one that can let you see into the future. While it does make sense, both of these explanations are based solely on speculation. But you know it isn't? This book! Ugh, why would you do that? In the Journal of the Two Sisters, Star Swirl the Bearded messed around with time travel, but not alone. Celestia helped him in his studies. Ahem. I was a bit surprised that he'd move forward with the spell, because he and I had been trying to figure out the math for quite some time. So the knowledge of time travel isn't foreign to Celestia, and it's later hinted that Starswirl might have known about Twilight. When I asked him if he knew about the pony with the last symbol of a star, he shrugged, clearly knowing something. Ah, but all of this is if we assume the Journal of the Two Sisters is actually canon. Don't even get me started on canon. By the way, I made a video on that very topic. 
Shameless self-promotion aside, this theory has some serious implications regarding the other two-parters, and even the single episodes. How much of this did Celestia plan for? That could be left to speculation. I would assume that in her vision, Celestia at least saw the keys being used, Twilight sacrificing her magic, and the final key being given to Twilight. Aside from this, there'd be less of a guessing game as to what needs to be done. The main six need to know where their keys are, and probably for the sake of learning a lesson, Celestia doesn't give them the answer directly. Twilight also needs to be near the Tree of Harmony, but if her friends knew about the Alicorn magic, they would likely encourage her to go somewhere else for the sake of Equestria, much like in the season opener. Hence why Celestia said Twilight couldn't tell anyone. I always wondered about that. This theory also makes it clear why Discord's betrayal was actually necessary to the plan. If Discord never betrayed them, first of all he never would have gotten the sixth key, and second of all he wouldn't have learned the lesson that made the key valid. Imagine the scene with the bubbles, where Twilight trades her magic for the freedom of her friends. Without Discord's key, that would have been it. No rainbow power, T-Rex wins. I wouldn't put it past Celestia to manipulate the situation to fit her visions. It wouldn't be the first time. So to conclude, Celestia was behind it the whole time. Or Zakora. Eww. Zakora, you know, she's the zebra from- Yeah, I know who she is. I'm just wondering what you're trying to say. What if Zakora was the mastermind behind it all? No, really, remember the potion I mentioned earlier? The potion came from Zakora in the first place, so she very well may be capable of seeing into the future. Like Apple Bloom said, she has a brew for everything. How would she even pull that off? And more importantly, where has she been since... Actually, when was the last time we saw her? And wouldn't she need to keep tabs on the main six, Discord, and Tyrik to know all that's going on? Other than the season premiere, we saw her in Philly Vanilli, and she made a background appearance in Twilight's Kingdom Part 2, but I don't see how she could have played that big of a part. Are you sure those are the only episodes we've seen her in? Well, according to Wikipedia... Just hear me out. We never figured out who that Pony of Shadows was from Castlemania. Lots of people just assumed it was Tyrek. It's sort of logical, since he was after all the villain of that season, but I don't really think that works. If that was Tyrek, he would have seen Twilight and found out that a fourth Alicorn Princess exists. In Twilight's Kingdom, Tyrek had no clue. If you look at the Shadow Pony's eyes, it definitely looks similar to Zakora in Bridal Gossip, even down to the hood. And I'm willing to bet Zakora also has a brew that turns you to shadows. This provides a medium in which Zakora can keep up with all the aspects of the plan incognito. But we only saw the Pony of Shadows once throughout the entire season, so I don't think there's enough evidence to support your claim. Then again, that could be a fun turn of events, so I guess we could hold on to it for a while. There's one thing I'm still wondering about. Were the rest of the two-parters planned this thoroughly? If Celestia is the one responsible, then how much control does she have? It's obvious that she played a big part in teaching friendship lessons to Twilight by making things harder than they had to be, but surely Destiny plays some role into this, right? Yeah, but that's another can of worms that we'll have to get to some other time. Maybe I'll pop on your channel to talk about it? Sounds like a plan to me. That is if we can ever figure out this hallway thing. Alrighty then, for now, let us know what you guys think in the comments below and we'll see you next time. Bro Hoof.